hard to imagine a time when the whole world had no idea about microorganisms living in their water, bacteria, cells, or even sperm. But that's because one simple invention opened up a whole new world of discovery in biology. The discovery of the cell led to new understandings of life and how it works at the smallest levels. A cell is the smallest unit that can carry out all the processes of life. Robert Hooke was the first to coin the term cell to describe the tiny, room-like features that he saw in a thin slice of cork under his microscope. Anton van Leeuwenhoek was the first scientist to realize that cells were actually living things. He looked at pond water, and perhaps more infamously, different types of sperm. Just don't think about how he got it. Robert Brown coined the term nucleus in the cell. Even though other scientists like Leeuwenhoek had seen it before, it was named by Brown. These discoveries of these three scientists led to the formation of the cell theory. The cell theory has three parts. The first is that all living things are made of cells. The second, cells are the smallest unit of life. And last, cells come from other cells. Now, we couldn't have figured out any of this if it weren't for one of the most important inventions in all of cell biology, the microscope. There are some basic parts that most microscopes have that are useful to know. There's an ocular lens, possibly two, which will have a magnifying lens in it. The objective lens, or lenses, will also have magnifying lenses in them. The stage is where you place your specimen. There's usually a light source, a coarse focus knob, and possibly even a fine focus knob. And then there's the base and the arm, which you want to hold firmly when you carry the microscope. The microscope helps scientists to define life and its characteristics. They decided that living things are all made of cells, they have organized parts, they obtain energy from their environment, they perform chemical reactions, they change with time, they respond to their environment, they grow and reproduce, and they maintain homeostasis, which is an internal balance. All of these are required characteristics for something to be classified as a living thing. Thanks for watching this episode of Teacher's Pet. Don't forget to like and subscribe and follow me on Twitter at SciencePet.